Are you struggling to get real insights from your amplitude data? In this video, I'm gonna show you the seven must-know reports that you should be using on a regular basis. Whether you're trying to understand your product, marketing, growth, or anything related to making a data-driven decision, these seven reports are gonna give you the building blocks you need to make those decisions properly. Let's dive in. The first report is segmentation. This is the most versatile report inside Amplitude. You can do a lot with it. This is really the starting point for anyone who wants to understand Amplitude data and start to build reports quickly. Now I'm here in an Amplitude demo account. This is a media streaming product. So imagine something like a Spotify or like an Apple Music. So those are kind of the events we're gonna see here. Once you're in it, you know, you can start to take any event possible, you know, for example, a play song or video quickly make, create a chart out of it. You know, in this case, we're looking at unique users over the last 30 days on a daily breakdown. And we kind of see this usage here that seems uh, quite consistent, you know, you might say. It kind of uh, increases during the weekdays and kind of decreases during the weekends. From here though, there's a lot of things we can do, right? This report is, has a lot of depth. You know, we can perhaps look at the event totals uh, instead of just unique users, maybe the average times a user are firing this event. Uh, maybe the frequency. We can, of course, start to do group buys, which uh, it kind of breaks down the event for us. For example, there's a genre type property in this event. So we can kind of see this data. We can perhaps see in a slightly different format, like a star chart or perhaps like a horizontal bar and make the mo most sense here, right? Absolute numbers versus relative numbers to each other. Change the date ranges. Uh, some charts have the ability to do comparisons uh, to a previous period, like, you know, the previous 30 days. And there's some anomaly or forecast that you can do if you have that product available for Amplitude. And of course, once you're here, you can export all of this into a CSV uh, or save it into a dashboard. Lots of things you can do in a single place. Uh, you can spend a lot of time here just understanding this, this chart. And we haven't even talked about cohorts and user segments and a bunch of other stuff, even custom formulas. So this is your number one spot. I would go find the Amplitude documentation and simply understand all the little details are available here and get comfortable with your data before we move on to the next step, which is funnels. Funnels is a fantastic way for understanding a series of steps and where users are dropping off. So for example, you know, in this case, of course, we're gonna have some kind of account creation event called user sign up. And then uh, let's keep it simple, right? Let's say, you know, we take this same play song or video, or in fact, actually, to make it a little bit more realistic, let's say we're gonna search for a song or video, and then we're gonna play the song or video down here. Now there's a conversion window here. The conversion is within one day. This can be, you know, seconds. Uh, it can be minutes. It can be hours. Uh, I think a one day here makes sense though. This probably is happening in a much shorter time. Maybe goes to like 10 minutes, let's say. Uh, let's, let's do that. So this kind of starts to tell us, you know, within 10 minutes of a user signing up, how many of them are actually searching for a song and playing a song. The numbers are actually not as high. So perhaps there's something else we can do, uh, something else we, we can drive users to change or to engage with the product faster within a few minutes of them sort of creating an account where the excitement is the highest. Just like before, lots of different things we can do here, right? We can, we can do group buys, we can do filters, right? The same uh, group buy we had before uh, would be available here, the genre type. And it kind of tells you the, the exact funnel, but breaking it out by the different genres, right? This kind of becomes a little chaotic here. There's a bunch of formulas, time to convert. There's significance if you run an A-B test and of course, user segments. So this is the, num the second report that you must know in Amplitude. Very handy, very powerful. Lots of different ways to sort of combine events into steps and see the drop off between them. Now, the next report are data tables. Now data tables are handy. It's really just a table of data, but sometimes that's all you need. In this case, I kept the same three events from the previous funnel, the user sign up, the uh, search song or video or play song or video. They're all unique, as you can see here. We can, of course, change this to event totals or session totals. We can do some kind of group by here. Perhaps like a country might make, make the most sense. So we start to add a, a group by this breakdown and start to see this data. Again, very handy. The most common use case I see for data tables is actually attribution, right? We can actually take the event here and uh, choose an attribution model of some kind. Let's say last touch. Uh, perhaps we can apply it to all the columns, so the other two events. And, and here we start to see uh, where users are coming from. Country doesn't make sense. And we actually have a UTM campaign. So this is perhaps the most common use case that you have available uh, for a data table. You can take your attribution data, break it out by UTM source or medium if you have those. And then of course, uh, Amplitude can do an attribution for you here uh, to understand 
uh, what the breakdown is of the specific events. But of course, you'll need to do attribution. You can just do uh, whatever kind of breakdown in the table makes sense. So very handy, very cool way to display data that sometimes just simply makes the most sense to put it into a data table itself and then put this into a dashboard or export this to a CSV or something else. The fourth report you must know is retention. So we're gonna start with a basic retention here. That is, there's some kind of starting event that we wanna group users by to create cohorts and it's a kind of return event. Typically, the return event is the core value of your product. In this case, let's do the play song or video. That kind of seems to make sense. So Amplitude here starts to create a cohort, which means that on a daily breakdown, which we're here, over the last 30 days, it tells you how many users fired the user sign up, effectively how many users created an account. So on February 11th, there was uh, 13,000 users who created an account. And of those 13,000, how many of them actually came back and played a song on day one, day two, day five, day seven, and so forth. You can make this weeks, you can make a month, whatever whatever you need. And you can kind of see the retention rate dropping over time. It kind of makes sense for a product, but you can start to see, okay, what is the D7 retention rate, for example, right here? Or what is the uh, D30 retention rate? Right here. And of course, you can break this down by many of the things we saw before. We can segment things. Uh, we can do different kind of filters. So this kind of starts to give us a sense as to what the usage frequency for your product is. Are users actually sticking around? What is the stickiness? What is the engagement over a long period of time? Not just a 10 minute funnel or maybe a one day, seven day funnel. Uh, so lots of flexibility, very powerful to be able to track this data. This report, the one downside is you need data. So if you just implement uh, Amplitude, you may not have this data for 60 days, 90 days, uh, six months, depending on how long your frequency is. You know, some products, their usage frequency might be months. So you might need to wait six months before this report is actually useful. But once it is useful, uh, it's a very handy report. Now the fifth report we have to look at is journeys. Journeys is a handy way to understand how users are actually navigating through your product. So if you don't know the specific steps or you're just curious about what's actually going on, we can actually do a lot of different ways. So for example, we may take uh, some kind of ending event, a, a conversion of sorts, let's say play song or video. And this it starts to tell us what are the different paths users took to get there, right? And we can add steps. In this case, you know, we're adding multiple steps here. And we can see where users are landing. They're, you know, they're typically, it looks like they're primarily searching for a song. They then select the song and then they play the song. That kind of makes sense. But there are some places, you know, maybe they're coming from the main landing screen, then they select the song and then they play the song. So if you start to do different changes to your product, maybe different screens, different promotions, maybe pop-up banners and things like that, you can start to see if that's actually being reflected in the way the flows report uh, is showing or the way you, you, you expect it at overall. The key about the flows report is you really want to hide things, right? You, you can see there's four events hidden. You, for example, you might say, you know what? I actually do not care about this main landing screen. So we're actually going to uh, hide it. Main landing screen here. And it gets removed from the flows and now you just have whatever other events are available. So the more you remove, the more you sort of slice and dice, you can group by some properties, you can exclude events by some properties, uh, the more this report, report becomes useful. But this is an exploratory report. You're gonna have to play around with it, add things, remove things, add more steps, remove steps, until you get sort of the answer that you're looking for. And then likely from there, you have to go do some kind of experimentation. The sixth most useful report in Amplitude is sessions. Now sessions is of course known to almost everybody. You know, this is almost like a legacy from the world of Google Analytics. Uh, but Amplitude has brought sessions back. It kind of functions in a very similar way. There's usually a timeout uh, amount. Uh, I think 30 minutes is the default. And then anything that happens with that, within that 30 minute window becomes a session. If a user keeps engaging, the session keeps extending, of course. So there's actually a report that just simply reports on sessions. By default, this is what you see. You know, you're seeing all your sessions and you're seeing the total number of sessions. And again, it seems to follow the same pattern we saw before uh, with a play song or video, which kind of makes sense, right? But there's a few other things you can do, right? You can maybe see the time per user. Uh, you can see the average length of a session and how that's changing over time. There's a 13 minute or 12 minute average uh, session length. Maybe the distribution of those session lengths. So, you know, how are users actually being distributed? Uh, where are users spending the most time? Average per user or total time. Uh, there is a couple of things that I can do. You know, you might be able to group by some property values. 
for example, country, you know, which we saw earlier, you kind of see the same breakdown. Uh, it's not quite as, as flexible as some of the other reports, but you do have a lot of data available here. You can, it's just a matter of how you filter it. And you can do some of the user segments and so on that we really have not looked. Perhaps you add multiple sessions and then add different filters to each one to be able to compare them uh, and see if that matches. So again, very handy, a very useful concept. I still see a lot of teams who really think about sessions a lot and try to understand what's happening in those sessions. Is a session length exactly what you, you, you want it or how do you extend it or make it shorter, whatever it is. So lots of cool ways that you can break apart this data to give you more insights into sessions. And lastly, the seventh must know report in Amplitude is Lifecycle. Now Lifecycle is a little bit more advanced. Uh, Amplitude actually has a whole playbook around this. You can actually Google this and, and look it up. But effectively, Lifecycle tries to group your users into four major groups, right? And you see them here. Uh, they could be either new users who just join your product, current users who are actively engaging in your product, depending on, on whatever event you choose, resurrect your users, which means they were not active in the previous period, and now in this period they are. And uh, there is uh, one more, uh, dormant users right here, uh, users who are not active. So the key here is that you have to choose an event that makes sense. In this case, I think a play, song, or video actually perhaps is the most useful event here. You need, you need an event that actually showcases the value of your product. Simply opening the app or logging in is typically not enough. But playing a song or video makes sense for a streaming product here of this demo data set. And from there, uh, you want to have some kind of frequency. In this case, for example, we may look at last 90 days. And you know the, the usage interval, the product usage is every seven days, which again, I think that makes sense for this kind of product. Your usage interval, of course, might be weeks or months. You kind of decide that. Uh, and then from there, it kind of tells you over those, you know, each of those seven day periods, what is the breakdown of those users? Let's actually make this a little bit smaller so we can a little bit more easier to read. So it shows you how many of them are resurrected users who were not active in the previous seven days, how many of them are current users, how many of them are new users, and then dormant, and so on. And what you're trying to figure out here over time is, uh, are these numbers actually changing? Or are you having a larger amount of dormant users, a smaller amount of new users, a smaller amount of current users, and so forth. And, and you can see as you try different uh, tactics, uh, communication messages, in-app notifications, push, changes to the product, is this changing overall? Is this actually becoming better or worse? Then you also have this pulse ratio, which I find quite handy. Uh, the pulse ratio is typically just a formula that, that takes the different users. Uh, generally speak, speaking, if you have a pulse over one, it means the product is growing. If it's lower than one, it means it's not growing. Of course, you can see here that here is under one, so during this seven day period, the product did not grow, but in this one it did, uh, a pulse ratio might actually make more sense over a long term period like this. You can see that generally this product, the demo data, is growing uh, somewhat, uh, but perhaps not as much as we might like, uh, and you know, it might be uh, closer to stagnation if, if possible. So lifecycle is very handy, but again, you want to understand the definitions for each of those groups, really have the right events, play around until you have the right product usage interval, do any other kind of filters that you might care about, uh, but once you have this chart, it becomes a, a very cool way to understand what's going on with the user base at a high level and be able to plot this out over multiple months and see if you're actually truly growing uh, and not caught up in the small weeds that you may happen if you're only looking at the uh, other reports. Now that you know the seven must know reports in Amplitude, you must have the right building blocks, which are the events, event properties, and user properties in Amplitude. This next video is actually gonna show you everything you need to know about the Amplitude implementation process. Even if you already implement Amplitude, highly recommend you check it out. There might be a few sections that might be relevant to you if you don't think you're getting enough value out of your insights and the data that you have in Amplitude. So highly check out this video. It will cover tracking plans, SDKs, technical details, and much more. My name is Ruben Degarte, and I'll see you in the next video.